This is a Peterbilt 567 concrete truck. It has a McNeilis Bridgemaster body on it. It was made by Diecast Masters and it's N150 at scale. Wow. Wow is the word here. This thing is fantastic. It hits on every level. The detail is great. It displays well. The functionality is awesome. And the price is fantastic. I've seen these sell at $50. They're a steal at $50. I've seen them sell at $80. They're a steal at $80. If you want a concrete mixer in your fleet, this is the one to get. It is every bit as nice as TWH and Sword, better than First Gear, and better than NZG or anything Conrad's ever put out. Diecast Masters really doesn't get the credit they deserve for their trucks. The trucks are top notch, and this is a great example of it. So right off the bat, this thing displays excellent. It looks really good sitting on the shelf. The, the paint is very good, the decals are very good, the, the lights and the chrome, you know, parts of it are very good. The polished aluminum wheels look great. Uh, just Diecast Masters did an excellent job with this. It, it, it's hard to appreciate just how nice of a truck this really is. It's nice to have the bare basic white paint scheme. If you really want to customize it, it'll be easy to do it because of the white paint everywhere, which is nice. Uh, the polished aluminum wheels look really good. All the warning labels look excellent. You got the McNeilis logo on the mud flaps and on the, the fenders there, which is really nice. The filler caps for the tank, the water tank, are pretty cool. The uh, You even got the little def tank right there, along, right next to your fuel tank. If you come back here, the ladder does work to climb up there and hose out your chutes, which is pretty neat. If you come around to the back side here, everything's there that should be. You got a DOT bar here. You got your three little red lights up top because God forbid you don't have those. The tag axle does come down. You have the quarter fenders on there, which is pretty nice. You can see the cylinder inside of there which is also pretty cool. You have three extra pieces of chute hanging right here and they do pop out. It's just a plastic bracket here that they sit in, but they do pop right out and they will clip on right here. So you can add three extensions onto the chute, which is pretty cool. You do have the cylinder there so you can raise it up. You have all the warning labels in the world that look really very good. I mean, you can't read them, but it looks like you could. Um, every year, same thing. You got more warning labels. Underneath, it looks excellent. It's really cool on the pusher axle. It looks like it could steer. It really does. I can't get it to move, but it looks like it should be able to. And what's also cool is you can fix it in the lowered or raised position so if you want to look like it's loaded going down the road you can if you want to look like it if you want to look like it's empty you can do that too you got to your drive lines transmission and the motor everything's there that should be there you get your air tanks here now one of the things that diecast masters does that's really cool is they give you a choice of stack so you can run either the straight stack or the curve stack on your truck now I can't quite get the uh, the stacks to go in there. I think either the, the peg's too big or the hole's too small. I might have to sand it down a little bit and, and see if I can get it to go. Because it's, it's just at that point where it doesn't want to go. So, you do have a Packard motor inside of here. Now, Packard is kind of like the house motor brand for Peterbilt and Kenworth. They're all owned by Packar, and that's kind of like their, their motor brand name. Um, they're not bad motors. You can certainly get some pretty nice Packar motors. But it's kind of like, uh, you know, International makes their own motors. You don't get an International motor in a Peterbilt. And at the same time, you don't get a Packar motor in an International. It's just not something that you do. Now, if you open up the, win the, the window, the door here, the windows are open. If you open up the door here, you can see inside the cab, and the cab interior is awesome too. It, it certainly wasn't overlooked. You can even see the Peterbilt logo on the steering wheel, which is awesome. Now, if you look carefully, you'll notice what's missing in there. That means this truck is an automatic. Now, 
automatic trucks have gotten a lot more popular in the last couple of years and that's because the, the automatic transmissions have gotten a lot better than they used to be uh, a lot of the older guys if they've had an automatic transmission they swear they will never have one ever again how horrible they are how terrible they are and then once they get into one of these newer trucks it's oh man I'm never going back to shifting gears again and to be completely honest it can be a lot of fun to slam gears flying down the highway for about 15 minutes if you're in bad traffic if you're you're stop and go all day it gets old fast and you really appreciate having an automatic I mean, it, it's a different skill set but it's just as you get a little bit older you really appreciate it so one of the reasons why it's so awesome to see an American concrete mixer that's a conventional style mixer for the longest time uh, you could get European style concrete trucks from NZG and Conrad there are probably 600 different makes and models of trucks that you can get and they're all really nice they're they're great models but they're not what you see in North America very rare will you see number one a man brand truck or a cab over cement mixer you don't even see a Lieber you know mixer body anywhere because it's just not it's just not practical for the United States it's honestly too expensive anyway um, but that's that's what you had except for one other option for the longest time if you wanted a North American style concrete mixer this was your only option and this is a nice truck it's a it's a Mac from Conrad it's a it's a good looking truck to be honest it's probably above the detail standard that was out at the time and it does look good for an older truck I love seeing the the old Mac concrete mixers because you only see a million of them going down the road to be honest if it had a different set of wheels on it it would probably look a lot better but it does look dated and like I said there's 30 years of production between the two so if you set them side by side obviously they're going to look different but really I think this holds up pretty well for for its age so you might have noticed that the the drums here are actually about the same size this one's maybe a little bit bigger than what this one is but this is a three axle truck and this is a five axle so McNeilis makes two different well they make a couple different but they make a standard mixer body and they also make the bridge master which is what this model is and the reason that they make the bridge master specifically is to take advantage of the federal bridge laws that's the reason why you have this goofy tag axle back here why it's so long and why it sticks out so far so I'm gonna butcher this somewhere between your overall length and your combined axles you have different weight ratings that you can take across the federal bridges on highways uh, if you have a greater overall length depending on what state you're in and what their rules are you can add you know five six eight ten thousand pounds to what you can carry now where that comes in to why that's a, why they would do this a yard of concrete weighs around 4,000 pounds so by adding 10 or 11 or 12 feet to your overall length if that lets you carry an extra 10,000 pounds that means you can carry two more yards of concrete every load every day so by adding the tag axle back here that's money in the bank you know if you have you know jobs where you send 35 trucks out in a day well that really adds up that that extra two yards that you can carry that that saves you so much money every day that's the reason why mixer companies or the manufacturers make these it's not really cheating it's just taking advantage of the laws as they were written now it's kind of a, arguable whether or not these actually do anything to take the weight I think when you first put them down they do take the weight but you know as the truck ages and it it gets miles on it it's pretty much guaranteed that this is going to take less and less and less weight as it ages so like I said you're not really cheating you're just taking advantage of the laws as they were written and there's nothing more American than taking advantage of the laws you're not breaking them you're just bending the rules anyway 
that's about all I got for this. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask. If there's anything you'd like to see, let me know. I might just have it. If you'd like to see more of what I have, please subscribe to Maryland Construction Diecast. And thanks for watching.